Hey, it's me, DribbleNerd LOLs, and today's video is about dribble colors and genetics requested by Dribble Girl. The link to her channel is on the top left corner of the screen, but first I want to say thanks for all the subscriptions and likes, I appreciate it a lot. And a quick heads up, at the end of my Tuesday uploads will be a link to a video created by one of my subscribers, and it'll be called the video of the week, so you definitely do not want to miss out on it. So now I will explain the wonders of gerbil genetics and coloration. I'm going to start off by explaining how genetics work in gerbils. The following loci are known to exist in gerbils. So first there's the agouti locus, and it controls the white belly and ticking. What is ticking? Ticking is the dark color at the tips of the fur that often look like pepper, but obviously not every dribble has it. Then there's the albino locus, which controls the overall level of color produced. Just to let you know, albinoism does not exist in gerbils. Next is the dilute locus, which controls the depth of the color. The extension locus controls the balance between black and yellow pigment in the coat. The gray locus controls the intensity of yellow and black in the fur. And the pink eye dilution locus controls the eye color and whether the coat is lightened. The spotting locus is a dominant trait and will most likely result in 50% of the litter being spotted, even if just one of the parents has the SP trait. This locus also causes the fur pattern, pied, and mottled to happen as well. The SP locus puts spots on the tip of the nose, forehead, collar, as well as the back and tip of tail. The color point gene darkens the extremities and it will leave markings of a Siamese cat. If you would like to know any further information about the genetic traits, click the middle of the screen. There's a really great site it'll take you to. Just scroll down toward the end of the page or ask me. Now on to the fur coats and patterns. There are tons out there, so I can only name so many. So first there's the agouti, which is dark brown with black ticking, along with the white belly and dark pigment. Then there's the black coat, that's, well, all black, but usually with some white underneath and on the paws. Next we have the polar fox. They have a white undercoat with black ticking and dark pigment. The dark-eyed honey has a golden coat and black ticking, also dark pigment. Now, nutmegs are pretty hard to describe. They look like a dark-eyed honey when they're pups. They become a rich dark brown color with dark pigment. There's also the gray agouti, not to be confused with the polar fox. So a gray agouti has dark pigment and a grayish white undercoat with a whole lot of ticking and the stomach is solid white. A red fox looks like this. It has a very spice orange color to it and it covers the entire gerbil including the belly and has pink pigment. Here is a lilac. They are dark gray with pink pigment. Don't get it confused with a sapphire for it is lighter than a lilac. All gerbils go through a molting stage where their fur turns into their adult color. In addition to the video, I would like to give you guys tips on how to tell the colors right from their birth. If you see dark eyes such as these, you know it's going to be a dribble with dark pigment. Some examples of dribbles with dark pigment would be an agouti, nutmeg, and dark eyed honey. If the eyes are light like the ones here, then they'll have pink pigment. Some gerbils with pink pigment would be a red fox and lilac. So if the gerbil has dark eyes and dark skin all around, it's a black or slate. But if it's only its back that's dark, then it's an agouti. Dark eyes with all pink skin means it may be a polar fox, nutmeg, etc. That's about all. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I don't mind a thumbs down. For both, help me out a lot. Please subscribe, and I'll see you this Tuesday.